Hi, do you want to learn how to play Californication by the Red Hot Chili Peppers on drums? Then keep watching, because after this video you will be able to play it like this. Hi, and welcome to this how to play the drums of the Red Hot Chili Peppers song Californication, played by their fantastic drummer Chad Smith. This song is a great example on how to tastefully play ghost notes in your groove, something that Chad Smith masters. Before we dive into it, I want you to know that in the description of this video below, you will find a download link to where you can download sheet music of all the material that I'm discussing in this lesson. The second thing I want you to know is that I advise you to not focus on a complete drum score going from the beginning of the song all the way up to the end, but try to figure out which elements the drummer is playing, which ingredients he's playing basically. So in this song, for instance, we have a groove in the verse and we have a groove in the chorus and we have an ending of the chorus. And those are basically the ingredients that you need to know to play this song. So once you master these different elements, it's up to you to listen to the song and find out where you need to play what part. You will also develop a stronger sense of knowing the f structure of a song. And stay away from reading sheet music. Try to use your ears. The first groove I want to discuss with you is the main groove that he's playing in the verses. Let me play the complete groove for you. You might have noticed that I'm playing a lot of soft strokes on the snare drum. These soft notes that are in the groove is what we call ghost notes. Now before we go into that, I want to take out the ghost notes and look at the essential parts of the rhythm. The fundamentals of the rhythm. And the fundamentals of the rhythm are the kick drum and the snare drum played strong. In this case, the snare drum plays strong only on the backbeat. That is the two and the four, the second count and the fourth count. And the bass drum is playing on the one and the end of three. So if I only play that and I play eighth notes in my hi-hat, we get this groove. The interesting element of this groove are of course the ghost notes. Those soft strokes that are played on syncopated sixteenth notes. Now let's build this up in steps and let's add two soft strokes in the groove that he's also playing but are not the most tricky elements of the groove. I'm going to add a ghost note on the snare drum on the last sixteenth note of the second count and the second sixteenth note of the third count. It will sound like this. Let me play this now in the original tempo and you will notice that it already starts sounding like the original groove. One, two, three, four. Now, let's add another ghost note. And now we're going to add a ghost note right after the second count right after you play the snare drum strong on the second count, the backbeat. Now let's only focus on that backbeat and the ghost note after. Slowly played, it sounds like this. Now after that you also get ghost notes, the ones we already added in the groove. Let me play the whole groove slowly with this extra ghost note on the second sixteenth note of the second count. Playing ghost notes can be very tricky, especially because you need to alternate between strong snare drums, like real downstrokes, and just the soft notes playing afterwards. 
Now, I don't want to go too deep into the technical aspect, but my philosophy is always that you stay as close as the drum as possible. You don't touch it while you're not playing it, but you stay as close as possible. And then when you need to play loud, you just really play a strong stroke, like an upstroke going all the way up and hit it. And when you need to play a soft stroke, you're already close to the drum. So you just have to tap it and you get that soft touch, that soft sound. Now, when I start playing in the beginning, this is my standard position. And if I just play the first two counts, you will see what's happening. I start and then I lift up and I already close to the snare drum and I tap it again. So that's how I get that difference in dynamics. So, and then I'm back and a small hit. Let me play that one more time. And then I have to stay with that snare drum because there are more ghost notes coming before I am at the fourth count. And I play a strong note again on the four with my snare drum. So let me play everything what we just discussed, but then slowly. Now, we have to just add one more ghost note. And this one is the trickiest. And again, keep in mind, when one of these things don't work for you yet, it's okay, you can still play the song. Just add everything step by step if you're ready for it. But remember, music is not about all kind of fancy stuff you're playing in the drums or in the guitar. It's getting... But remember, the song doesn't depend on all the small fancy stuff you're playing. If you play a strong groove and project the sound strong and you're playing tight, those are the most important elements when you're playing music. Not if you're playing every ghost note correct. So. Let's focus on the last one. The last one is a little ghost note that you also double on the last 16th note of the bar. Let me play it one time for you also with the other 16th notes. So I'm basically playing the complete groove, but we're focusing on that little roll. It sounds like a little roll at the end of the groove. Here we go. So at the last 16th note of the bar, we're adding another ghost note, but we're doubling that note. So if I play only that, we get right before the one. So we get three and four and And that's a tricky thing because you basically are doubling the 16th note into two 32nd notes. Try not to do this. I discussed this in a different lesson on the song Trouble by Coldplay. The drummer is also playing that little roll, but it's really a play double stroke. It's not something you press in the drum to get that sound because it will have a different effect. You really want to play, and those are two controlled actual played notes. It's tricky. You can also just play one ghost note. It will sound like this. If you're ready for it, you can try to double that note. Again, the tempo is a bit faster of this song than what I just played. So keep in mind, you have to speed up your control with playing that double stroke. So let's move on to some other elements that Chad Smith is playing in this song. Okay, so the groove that we just discussed is played by Chad Smith in the song, in the verses, but also in the guitar solo, and also in the pre-choruses. But before we go to pre-chorus and chorus, I want to also discuss a little element in the verses. Because in the verses, his drumming follows the chord sequence in a very musical way. The first four bars of the chord sequence, he plays the groove that we just discussed. But then there's a chord change and he supports that chord change in his drum groove. If I take out the ghost notes again, Basically, because there is a chord on the 1 and on the 3, and again in the second bar also on 1 and 3, he supports that by playing the bass drum on 1 and 3. So again, if I take out the ghost notes, we just get a basic rhythm. And it goes like this.
It's only two bars and he goes back to the original groove. And therefore, in the verses you get a six bar loop. Four bars of the original groove that we discussed before and then two bars playing the bass drum on the downbeats one and three. Now, you can add the ghost notes as well in there. And it's basically the same pattern. Let me play it slowly for you. What he's doing right before each bass drum, so right before the third count and right before the one of the second bar, and again right before the third count of the second bar and right before the one of the next bar after that, he's playing that ghost note, that doubled 16th note ghost note. So again, because you, you're doubling it, it's 32nd notes, but we know that little thing before. Now if it's tricky, if you're technically not ready for it in your drumming, just play a normal ghost note or you can leave it out completely. The most important is that you play that bass drum because you're supporting the music and it's all about supporting the music. So if you want to play it, slowly you're playing right before the one and the three, you're playing that little doubled note and again you're really playing that double stroke. Now let me play the whole six bar loop that is played in the verses and you will also hear me play guitar and play bass so you will notice how it works really well with the music and that that last two bars playing the bass drums on one and three really supports the music and then we go back to the other rhythm again. So here we go. Now after these six bars, there's another four bar loop instrumental in the verses. Again, I'm gonna give you the ingredients and try to Find out where everything is placed when listening to the music. You can do that yourself. All right, so after the verse we go to a pre-chorus and you're basically playing the same rhythm, but then you're playing it on your right cymbal. If you want me to discuss the fills, please let me know in the comments and I will make a separate video about the fills that Chad Smith is playing in this song. For now I leave out the fills and mainly focus on the grooves that he's playing. So again in the chorus we play the same groove, but then we play it on the right cymbal. Let me play it for you. Now let's move on to the last ingredient and that's the drum part that Chad Smith is playing in the choruses. Now I want to subdivide the choruses in two groups of four bars. They're almost the same but the ending is a little bit different. So because there are chords very strongly played on one and three again, Chad Smith supports that in his drumming by playing crashes. In the first chorus he only does that in the first bar but I hear that in the second chorus more often also in bar two. Now let us do it only in the first bar. So what we get is this. One, two, three, four. So playing a basic rhythm and you're playing crashes on one and three in the first bar. In the second bar you also play the bass drum on one and three and you can add the same kind of ghost notes in there. So let me only focus on the second bar. Now in the third bar, there's an anticipated chord on the end of four and you wanna also play that in the drums. So the third bar goes like this. So I'm not playing a right cymbal anymore on the fourth count when I play the snare drum, so I can go on the end of four to my crash. Let me play it really slow. You can keep the same ghost notes, but if you take them out again, no problem, it's about the music. You're following what the chords want you to do. 
in the music. So again. Now then afterwards we have a fourth bar and because the chorus is not finished yet, you want to fill that up. So you want to continue playing something. I'm not going to go in depth what he's actually playing because it's almost kind of a rhythmic fill. It's a yeah improvisation there. In the sheet music you will find a transcription of what I'm playing or what you could play. Now if we get the whole first four bars of the chorus we get this. Now you can loop those first two bars in the second four bar part. Now when they finish that chorus they anticipate again on that end of four. And then you stop playing for a bar before you enter again into the second verse or into the guitar solo after the second chorus. So um, let me play this for you. Last four, uh, I'm, I'm basically playing the last four bars of the chorus. Here we go. So you might have noticed, to end the chorus, I'm doing something different in that third bar or seventh bar if you take the first four bars into account. So let me just play that bar. Here we go. So in the beginning it's the normal rhythm, playing a bass drum on end of two. And then going to a flam to set up the three crashes going to the end of four. So if I play it slow, we get. Now in this case, I'm only playing those three crashes on the one crash that I have here. But I hear in the music that he's playing two different crashes. Say this is a crash, which is now my right symbol. After the flam, you might do this. So you got the flam. You're alternating between two crashes. If you have one crash, you can also do it with one hand. It's not a fast song, so you can also do... It's important that you set it up with the flam on the third count. So let me play that bar again. That's your setup, and then you go to the crashes. Here we go again. Second part of the chorus, four bars, it will sound like this. One, two, three, four. And in the vocals he ends with the word Californication. He sings that word, the title of the track. You have a one bar rest and you enter back into the verse if we just played the first chorus and if it is the ending of the second chorus we go into a guitar solo and during the guitar solo he plays the same groove but then also on the right the same groove that we've discussed in the beginning that's the groove that he plays in the verses and also in the pre-choruses thanks for watching this video on the drum part of californication by the retro chili peppers as always in the description of this video you will find a link where you can download the sheet music with all the material that i discussed in this lesson if you like what I'm doing, please consider subscribing. And let me know what you think and if you have any suggestions of other songs you want me to cover in my next video. You can put it in the comments and I will read it and will answer your questions. For now, have fun practicing and stay tuned for the next Music Focus. Mm -hmm.